On this video, I would like you to step inside the inner sanctum of the Dealmakers podcast studio and meet three exceptional dealmakers, all mastermind clients. All of them have bought multiple businesses and you are going to discover the insider tricks of the trade. And if you haven't taken my brand new free video training course, there is a link somewhere on the screen. Click the link. Take the course and I will teach you the essentials of buying a business successfully. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the notifications bell. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Andy, hey, lovely nice to, see, to you. see you. How right? are you? Good to see you. Yeah, great, thanks. How are you? Good to see you after so long. So, Andy, we've known each other now for a number of years. I think it yep. must be about five years. Five years or now. so, yeah. Uh, and you were on Mastermind, uh, well, I guess that was 2018. 18, what yeah. a great group that was. Yeah, I it was cool. Many fond memories of, of that group. Uh, and you went straight off that program and bought your, your first business? Yeah, within a few months, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is wonderful. Tell us yeah. about that. So, yeah, so we came off the program. We start, we sent the letters out. Um, one, we got quite a few back. We, we sort of did the telephone calls, met, I think, five. Um, and then one guy, you know, you could tell he was genuine. He had a really genuine reason for sale. Um, he wanted to be an ambulance driver because um, he'd run his business for 20 years and he was tired, right? Um, it was an area of what I already did in my other life, but you know it was e-commerce which i'd never touched and we wanted okay. to get into so yeah we agreed terms and just pushed it all through i think it was probably it's probably about eight weeks in end um from agreeing a deal to diligence and getting it over oh, the that's line. pretty good because sometimes yeah. people think that it, it takes like a year and a half to buy a business i guess i guess it could do if it was a big enough deal but yeah in the sme small business space yeah yeah eight, eight weeks is a little bit more of a sensible timeline and i think people get a bit bored of conversations if you take too yeah. long they get a bit exactly they get really excited and they go cold on you don't yeah. they? you're either so, doing it or you're not doing it we can agree terms agree price let's just get it done yeah and it's a confidence thing if you go right yeah. this is the stages and we're going to buy it this is the price this is how we buy it if they agree that mm -hmm. um there's not a lot more to talk about really you just have to get the lawyers to up to speed yeah exactly I mean, which, is, which in itself can be a challenge yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. If you've got someone good on your side at least it cuts out 50 percent of the <laughs> uh, chance of it, of it yeah. going wrong so so you bought that business would that have been then in 2019 um well in march we're coming up to the end of the deferred consideration period okay um which is a great little celebration we're going to have yes um so that will be actually that will be five years fantastic so we've known each other longer than that we must have, we must yeah, have done, yeah. So, so how's it, how's it now going then? So it's now, five, five years later. It's the biggest part of our business. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, being e-commerce during the pandemic, um, e-com went through the roof. So our clients mm. all grew massively. Um, and we've introduced clients to clients within the business and some have bought each other. We've talked about right. acquisitions and one, one client now, they're turning themselves around from a £30 million a year e-com business and by March they'll be a hundred million pound a year and we'll be their supplier for all their e-com services. Incredible and how do they get from the 30 to the 100 what what was the process? Acquisitions. All through acquisitions, um, all through really? acquisitions. So really? they, they went from when we they first worked with us they were probably I think eight it was before we acquired them we've helped them grow through having a great sort of offering online mm -hmm. to 30 and obviously and with that they they get some cash flow, I suppose, and they got some investment. So they've created a group. Mm -hmm. um, and then they've just been acquiring other like-minded companies. Um, Interesting. So, yeah. So they've acquired three in the last two months. So five years on, biggest part of your, your business. I mean, that must, that must feel good. It's actually, yeah, to the point where... You know, as I've, we've said, you know, I've merged a couple of other companies in and they sort of sort of disappeared into the group. Um, but even the original business I had, we sort of almost not parked it, but we've cut that down now to focus on e-commerce. So it's not just yeah. the biggest part of the business. It's, you know, our branding and everything is all about e-commerce. Oh, interesting. So, so it's, we've, it's actually shifted the it's, whole group. Yeah, so it's ch changed the focus of the group. Yeah. That's very interesting. I, and maybe without that acquisition, you may well have done that anyway, but maybe it would have taken a bit longer. Or... I don't think we would have. I don't oh, think really? we'd have had the, the nous, I suppose, to go, mm. right, actually, let's move into an area of online, which we hadn't done before. You know, we've now got our own payment gateway. Um, we've got our own platform. 
Um, yeah, we manage probably 160 million a year in payments um, through that company. Um, and the push is just that now. And, you know, with our acquisitions now, instead of saying digital agencies or anybody in digital, it's anyone in digital who can complement what we do in e-com. So we've actually right. narrowed our sort of field down. So am I right in saying then that if we hadn't met, business may have taken a different path? Yeah. I mean, before, <clears throat> excuse me, before um, deal makers, it was all sort of, we tried to do all the experiential type stuff, okay. um, digital wars, events, things like that. Now that world has just got harder and harder. Um, you know, there's software which people can just do it themselves. Okay. Um, you know, there's basically to be brutal. There's no money in it anymore. Right. Um, that so those and they're really exciting projects. But you might get two a year now, where we used to get offered ten a month and turn five down. Right. Right. Um, right. So you know, we had to shift, and that was you know, but meeting you and then going right, actually, we can grow a different way. Um, and it was sending out letters and to see what comes back in the digital space. Yes. I mean, it could have been someone. It's interesting, else. actually, that the this old, very old fashioned approach, yeah. this direct mail approach works so well, even with digital online e-commerce businesses. 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, we're just going through it at the moment. And it's amazing. Just, you know, the emails you get back, you know, some of them apologizing that they hadn't responded quicker and things like that. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I think. Without naming the event, I believe that I was speaking at a conference. At Heathrow. At Heathrow, yes. And you were in the audience. Yeah. And I believe that you may have told me that you didn't have enough time to buy a business. Yeah. That was one of the first things. I remember going up to the table and said, look, I'm really interested, but I'm busy. I have yeah. got enough time to I remember to talking this. to you. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the fact is you have. <laughs> The reality is, and as it grows, you get more time. You know? Exactly. In actual fact, when you grow your business by acquisition and you have a bigger business, then you can invest in a management team 100%. that gives you more time. So the people who have the least amount of time are the people who are running the smaller businesses doing a bit of everything. Yeah. I mean, when I look back, I used to do obviously the sales. I used to do account management. I used to deal with the accounts in zero, ringing the accountants, helping do the company returns. Um I don't do any of that now. We've got an MD in place who's, to be honest, better than I was at running it. Um, well, that, that's always the goal, isn't it? Yeah. You hire people better than you, yeah. Yeah, he's great. Um, we've got a lady who was in one of the companies we acquired, who at the time was an admin, and we just realised she was amazing, and now she's a director of the company and pretty much runs all the day-to-day oh, really? -day stuff. Yeah, Very good. Um, and then one of the co-directors of the original company, she sort of runs the operations, and all I'm doing now is coming in when they need it, um, if they say, can you come in for a chat through something? We just want your opinion. And I'm literally in the last quarter said, I'm going to do about a day a week focusing on acquisitions again. So the opportunities for 2023 would be to do another deal, maybe a couple. So I've committed to the MD is a minimum of two acquisitions a year from next year. Oh, fantastic. Minimum. Great plan. I mean, I want to do one a quarter. That's my sort of internal because now you know you can do it. You've yeah. got the confidence that you've got a good infrastructure to plug yeah. into and you've got someone running the business. Yeah. So when you bought it, you can let them sort out all yeah. the stuff that needs They'll sorting out. They'll do that day-to-day -day thing. They'll, they're, and again, the banks, they'll sort all that stuff out where I can just go, there you go, guys, here's a lovely mm. new thing. We'll have a meet and greet. We'll all get together. Is this sort and then of you can reward team. yourself with a holiday. Yeah. Hopefully. And come and come back when it's all over. Exactly. <laughs> or pay the school fees, one of the two. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's an exciting time. And I think next year, you know, we've got an agreement. You know, the group has to be sort of between 20 and 30 million turnover within four years of the MD starting. It's big. I mean, that's double, then double, then double, then double. So we've got Incredible. Double, double every 12 months. And you and you are saying this to me with the the confidence of someone who knows that it's possible. Well, yeah, because we only have to buy one business and we'll double, and then the next business we buy will be bigger, won't it? So. Exactly, you can parlay exactly. up bigger and bigger, exactly. bigger and bigger deals. Yeah. So I always ask people, what would you say to someone who's watching or listening to this right now, and they've been thinking about making that next step? They 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 looked at all the free content of yeah. mine online a lot. Yeah. Uh, and there is a lot but now they want to, to take it more seriously but they're not quite sure 
Now, that's a position that you were in yeah. a few years back. So what would you say to those people who are sitting on the fence? I mean, I would say, you know, whether it's either with you and your deal makers or you need a network of people who are doing this around you to get you going and keep and, you know, and mentor you or not even mentor someone who is going to push back at you if it's not happening. I think that's the big thing. So for me, the deal makers thing, it was every four weeks. If you haven't done what you said you were going to do, you know, someone's, you know, we all had our little groups we bonded with, you know, someone's going, so what do you mean you haven't done it? Yes. Or, or in the sort of thing where, you know, stand up if you've done something, if you're the one who never stands up and says, I've done something, right? Uh, so I think... So it's accountability, isn't it? It's all about accountability, yeah. yeah. And hence now, you know, the remit for the new MD is I'm now accountable to him, not the other way around. I mean, other things he's accountable to me, of course. Sure, sure. But on that, he's saying... What have you done, Andy? So, so you, you, you're going to go out and find at least two deals in the next 12 months. Easy. He's going to integrate them. You're going to double the size of the business. Yeah. Sounds like a very clear plan to me. Yeah. I mean, in the next 12 months, we'll get to sort of between four and five turnover because of that. And then then it's easy enough then to go, right, yes. let's buy a bigger, more structured company, which is a much easier thing to buy. So. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And yeah. also, if you're... If you if you're doing that sort of level of turnover at that point, then you've got that increased credibility that helps that that sort of deal yeah. get over the line. And it's also the bigger the company, the less sort of uh, it's my baby, the boss, the owners are, sure. aren't they? They're it's much easier to more do the deal. Yeah, they're, is, they're less emotionally attached it's, to it. Exactly, it's just a thing. Yeah. So yeah. So then those conversations become easier. It's all about you know you say we do diligence. This is what the valuation is. There's no personal insult there. They just go, well, I can actually see how that's worked out. It's all done very sort of, you know, pragmatically, I think is the word. So it's going to be an exciting 12 months? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's really cool, actually. And I'll get you back in 12 months' time. And you can tell us. I'm holding you accountable as well. You can hold me accountable, Jonathan. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can come back and tell yeah, us about, yeah. those, about those two deals. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very proud of what you've done. I think it's yeah, been a, a, tr a tremendous journey. And I'm very pleased that I've been part of that. It's life-changing doing what we did with you. I mean, it really is. It changes everything. So, you know, anybody listening, it really does. You know, and that's the honest truth. I'm not one of those who's just going to make it up. It's, it's completely changed what we do. So thank you. And thank you, Andy. And I will see you next time. Yeah, see you later. I'm interrupting your video with a very important message. If you are watching a video like this, it's probably because you're serious about buying a business. But watching free videos on YouTube will only take you so far. You need to take the next step. And the next step is a link that's somewhere on the screen up at the top, uh, which takes you through to our free video training. There's no cost whatsoever. You watch the free video training and that will give you some of the essential basics that you need. Now, if you get value from that, then I would invite you to be part of my next fast track program. Now, the fast track program has been running for a couple of years now. We've had nearly 3000 people around the world on the fast track program. And it's a Zoom program that you can attend from anywhere. Uh, it's broadcast from my living room to your living room, where I will teach you what you need to know to go and buy your first business. And there's a Q&A section at the end of each of the training sessions. So you can ask me all of your questions. Now, if you get great value from that and you're really serious about buying a business, then there's my mastermind program, a 12 month program where we hold your hand through the business buying process so that you can buy your first company. And when you have, I'll invite you into our inner circle, which is exclusively for people who've bought their first business. So that's what we've got lined up for you. It's up to you whether you take the next step. Anyway, Back to the video. I hope you have a good journey back. Yeah, no problem. Nothing's, oh, nothing's delayed. Packed. I can't lose Oh, yes. Pack. I'll let you know when it's going to go out. Yeah, please do, yeah. Well, Andy was a mastermind five years ago, and it's amazing that the, the first acquisition that he did, and he did several during that time, but the first one that he did is now the mainstay of his business five years later. Adam, hi. Hi, Jonathan. Great good to see you. you. Thanks you for coming okay? down. I'm looking forward to this. So, Adam, uh, I want to hear the whole story. Uh, you got into acquisitions, I believe, after meeting me or after uh, sort of listening possibly to this podcast and watching some some videos. So what's your background and at what point did you say to yourself, buying a business sounds like a great idea? 
Well, Jonathan, um, I'm kind of one of those statistics, unfortunately. Uh, is it something like 90% of startups fail? Well, yeah, quite quite possibly. Yeah, well, most, most 100, of them. One hundred percent of my startups did. So, okay. so okay. effectively, um, always wanted to do my own thing. Always wanted to run my own business. Tried several different things. Did the kind of you know information marketing stuff back in the early two thousands. You know all that good stuff. And everything I tried just didn't work. Um, and I don't know how I came across you, but was on YouTube and just kind of went down the YouTube rabbit hole as you do. And next thing you know, I'm watching videos from, from yourself talking about acquisitions. And other people on YouTube talk about acquisitions and things like that. But um, the way you were talking about acquisitions was kind of different to how other people talk about it. Okay. So, you know, other people are talking about, you know, kind of leverage buyouts, all this kind of stuff. And for somebody that's never run a business before properly, that's just kind of over my head. Um, but you were saying to us, you know, effectively, you can buy a business, you can probably buy it with no money down. And I can show you how the skeptic in me thought, is this too good to be true? Sure. Um, and yeah, I just kind of started to consume your, uh, your content. And then obviously you mentioned about one of your um, your courses. I think it was the is it the quick start or something? Is the uh, fast track fast track? Yeah. So did that for the day and then enrolled on the kind of the course for the twelve months. The mastermind. Yeah, and again probably not how it should be done, but didn't do anything for about three or four months, um, and basically that was just down to fear. I was I was just sure. afraid. Yeah. No, no, you know, you know what? You're not you're not, you're not alone because. It does take courage to take that that first step. And certainly when you're in the mastermind environment, you've got the support and the community. Yeah. But despite that, you can still take a little while to, to get yeah, yeah. going. And, and I, I think the thing is as well, the great thing with the mastermind is you're kind of forced into action because if you attend regularly, you know, every month going to the, um, going to the meetings and stuff like that, there's nothing worse than sitting there and basically doing nothing while somebody that enrolled at the same time <laughs> of you has, you know, built, a business group or it's, bought... it's funny you should say that because I've just interviewed someone who was on Mastermind five years ago right, okay. and he just said exactly the same thing yeah and, and it's true and I, I remember Phil you know Phil who did that amazing yeah. deal with the um, the haulage company and stuff like I was thinking bloody hell you know why aren't I doing it do you know what I mean I was like right Let's get some letters out. And Jonathan, honestly, it's I, I laugh now, but it's just like you say, just do it. Just send your letters out and just get going. And people will phone you. People have, will phone the, have the conversation. Say the right things. Hundred percent. And I'm going to tell you now. I'm probably the same as everybody else that's never done this before. When that first call came through, I absolutely hashed that call up. It was a call I never wanted to repeat again. It wasn't very good. The guy never rang me back, and we never did the deal. But you do learn. So you know, it's it, for you know. I I always say you know, in order to become an expert at something, you know, you, you've got to apply time dedication and you've also got to be a student you know and theory is great but you've got to put it into practice and yeah I would probably say my first 20 conversations weren't like the conversations I have today but I had to have those 20 conversations to get to the kind of yeah there's a, where... there's a learning curve for everyone yeah. and I think that the people who take that learning curve or go through that learning curve in the environment that you are in come out of it better yeah. than people who have no support mechanism at all. I'm 100%. And, you know, I'm not somebody with a polished business career. So literally, I am. I started off as a rookie. I really did. And, you know, I, I'd been in employment. You know, I hadn't kind of had any success behind me as such. And I just followed what you kind of told us to do. And I, I'm, you've not paid me to be here, I promise you. <laughs> no, I and I've just, I've, just, <laughs> I've just followed what you told us to do. And surprise, surprise, it works. Yeah. Okay, and that, that, that's, that's all I can say. No, that's, that's brilliant. So, let, so let's um, let's look at some of the, the, the some of the things that you said. So, with the benefit of hindsight, I'm curious as to why you think those startups didn't get get going in the way you wanted them to. I mean, you know, in Mastermind, you talk about a deal team. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you talk about a deal team, but um, also the business, the group, whatever you're building. It needs a solid team as well. So you have your acquisition team, but you also need a solid team to run um, a business, I believe. And, you know, I'm not an expert at finance. I'm not an expert at managing sales teams. I'm not an expert at marketing. You know, no experience of this stuff. And I think when you're in startup mode, 
probably because you don't have a great deal of funds. You know, you're everything. I'm Absolutely. an accountant. You've got to I'm do a lawyer. A bit of, because there's no one else. There's no one and, else. And, and also, you know, when you're the founder, you feel as though you need to do everything. There, yeah. there is that sense <laughs> exactly. of uh, because you don't want to sort of get other people. You don't want anyone to do it better than you as well. Exactly. And it's very hard to let go. Yes, it is. And um, and you know, you're you're effectively when you're in startup mode. I believe, unless you're a unicorn. You're buying a really badly paid job. Sorry for interrupting your video, but I wanted to introduce you to a great lawyer in the UK who can get your deals done for you. He's worked for 50 of my mastermind clients in the last few months alone. His name is John Andrews, and I've got his details right here in my little black book of contacts. You can phone him on 0345 241 2494, or you can email him on johnandrews.deallawyer at jmw.co.uk. If you want someone who can get a deal done, he is your guy. So let's get back to the video. Do you know what I mean? Because the hours are long. You're probably not going to get paid what you're worth or paid at all. Um, and, you know, and it, it, you just become fatigued. And, you know, I, I tried everything. I, I tried like, you know, five or six different things. Um, and I think just because it was me, no experience, it didn't work. Mm, and mm. then, as I said, started consuming your content and like looking at kind of some reviews from past, past students and things like that that you had on YouTube. And you're thinking, do you know what? This sounds like a shortcut. But then, obviously, the cynic in me is like, mm, too good to be true. Can yeah. this really have it's a... It's very easy for us to talk ourselves out of things, even if they're oh, good 100%. for us. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, I talk myself out of exercise on a daily basis. Yeah. So, uh, As you can yeah. see, so do I. Uh, but, but, but you're right. And the, the thing is, I just couldn't get my head around why someone would sell their business to me for no money up front over a deferred period, why someone would do that. And um, I now know why someone would do that. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I've probably had conversations with hundreds of business owners since working with you, and I haven't done hundreds of deals. I've you know I've done a good amount of deals, but you know probably about you know over a hundred business owners, and everyone's reason for exiting is is their own. They're different, but they do follow certain themes, and you discuss this on Mastermind. You know, people are just tired. They just had enough. No succession planning ill health you know there's a there's a there's a number of things and sometimes a business just needs like you know it's like buying a rundown house just needs a fresh lick of paint yes new eyes and then you, you breathe life back into it do you know what i mean and every deal i've done has been in the format that you say works every deal i've done has been deferred um i, I don't think let me think no I, i've not paid anything up front for a business um, I was going to pay um, an amount up front for a deal that I've just completed on. Anyway, it transpired through due diligence, actually, that it wasn't feasible for us to do so. So we didn't. So I've got a 100 percent record on kind of taking businesses on a deferred basis. And it works very well. Very good. So but yeah, are these tiny businesses, though? I mean, that that's the, the question I think some people will be asking in their minds. Yeah. Is this like a sort of a business that turns over 50,000 pounds that you, you managed to? scoop well, up okay so i'll um again and I, I promise you you know you, you've not given me something to say before i've kind of come in to I see haven't. you today right. but what what you said on mastermind was buy a small business typically you're going to buy yourself a job because mm -hmm. it just doesn't have the infrastructure to support management teams etc my first acquisition was an asset purchase i think it was about fifty five thousand pounds um there was there was two staff. It it didn't even turn over one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. I gave that business away because it was just an absolute bloody headache. I was spending probably a good part of my week, thirty hours a week, on this piddly little thing over here, and it yep. was just problem after problem mm -hmm. after problem. Mm -hmm. And again, I seem to have to do everything the hard way. I do it the way my head tells me <laughs> because I, I, you know, I, I'm fearful actually of change. I'm, I'm fearful of, you sure. know, I just thought that I couldn't speak to a business owner that turned over a million quid or something like that. And they'd be prepared yeah, to sell. So these are limiting beliefs, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So these, these are things that we tell ourselves, which actually do limit ourselves. We don't realise they limit ourselves. They do. And it takes someone else often to point it out and say, yeah, yeah. do you realise, Adam, that yeah, yeah. You're, in this, you're in this cycle here, you're stuck in this cycle where you do the same thing again and again. Yeah. But if you did this differently, you'd get a different result. I know sometimes people say, well, I couldn't, I couldn't buy a business because I've never run a business before. 
Well, you don't need to because you're not going to be running it. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole. That's the whole point. That's the thing. You're becoming a shareholder in a business, and as the shareholder, you get your share of the profits. If it, you're 100 shareholder, you get 100 of the profits. Yep. And other people <coughs> operate and run the business. Probably the same people are operating, running the business before you bought it, and they just carry on. Yep. Uh, but you're the new. It's like becoming the, the new owner of a property, and the tenants start to pay you rather than the previous owner. And and is again, I was I was talking to my uh, my partner about this, and Tom was saying, so let me just let me just ask you a question, he said, because this doesn't sound right. Is this the case? He was like, so you buy a business <laughs> effectively on a buy now pay later, and you're paying yourself a a consultancy payment or mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. salary from day dot, and it's you know usually kind of somewhere around six figures. He was like, and the old owner is okay with that. I was like, well, one, the old owner isn't there because we've done this deal mm-hmm. and they're now in the Caribbean or playing golf or spending time with the grandkids or, or whatever. And yeah, that's kind of what happens. And he's like, it just sounds too good to be true. I was like, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> so when people watch this and listen to this, uh, they often are sitting on the fence. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, this is going out in in January 2023 which uh, and I always say the beginning of the year is a great time to get started at anything whether it's a yeah, new diet you know a health plan whatever it is a great new time year's to resolutions. Get, new year's resolution great time to get started yeah. and also it's the time when a lot of business owners uh, don't want to be going back to their business after the christmas break yeah. so there's a very good time to find deals so it's a great time to get started but they sit on the fence and they say do i do this what would you say to those people? Because they're in the position that you were in two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would ask them, look back 12 months ago, were you having the same conversation with yourself last January? Okay. Tick, you were. What have you done in the last 12 months to change your life? If it's nothing, then again, it's that insanity thing, isn't it? Doing the same thing repeatedly, expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. You know, just do so, you know, it's like I've said before, if you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. If you believe you can, you, you can. can. If you believe, believe you can't, can't you're you can't. absolutely right, you can't. You know, yeah. And and also if you come into if you come into Mastermind or, you know, any of your programs and you pay the you pay the you know, the registration fee or, or whatever and do nothing, you will hundred percent get nothing. Of course. Because I've done it. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> if you come in, actually apply yourself, do what you say. Don't waste three months like I did. Just get on. Yes. You know, you'll get results. And the great thing is with Mastermind as well, which I loved, is that potentially you can find people there that you can partner with. You can, you know, there's WhatsApp groups, there's, you know, all sorts of kind of things. There's loads of support. And if you don't know the answer to a question, you or one of our peers or whatever, they're there to help. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. the LinkedIn community is like bloody, you know, very active. Yeah, it is. It's great. So so it, it's it's all about... You're not doing this by yourself. Yeah. Doing anything by yourself is hard. It is. But when you have support, like having a personal coach, we keep coming back to fitness, but having a personal personal coach, you, know, you become accountable. Yeah. And when you become accountable, you do more than when you are only accountable to yourself. I'm 100%. And, you know, it's, and there's nothing worse, I say this all the time, than sitting there and you're seeing the people that have enrolled at the same time as you getting results. And you're like, why am I not getting results? Oh, yeah, that's because I'm not doing anything. anything yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, it, it works point. if you work it. And on that note, Adam, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Jonathan. I'd love to have you back next year to find out what uh, 2023 um, held for you. And, cool. um, and I'm sure it is great things. And I will see you at our next group meeting. Fantastic. Cheers, Jonathan. Thanks. Have a good day. Let me know when you complete. Send me a message. Will do. All right. Cheers, good luck man. with it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So Adam is living proof that if you get your mindset right, you can really make this happen. It's not just about strategies and techniques. It's about that belief that you can do it, having those conversations and getting that first deal done. John, Jonathan. how are you? Good to Great, see thanks. you. How was your journey? Really good. Wonderful. So John, you've done six acquisitions in your new group and taken it from zero to 2.5 million in annual revenue with another acquisition lined up ready to go and I'm sure many more to to come to follow. I want to discover from you what you've learned from that and also I understand doing 150 discovery calls with owners. So 
big question to start off with. What have you learned? Okay, so the um, I think every anybody going out there doing discovery calls is going to be a little bit nervous about um, what people are like. So the majority are actually entirely reasonable, um, nice to talk to. Uh, yes, a little bit edgy, a bit nervous. Uh, one of the big ones I've learned is if you start off on a hostile foot or semi-hostile foot from the conversation from the other side, you might as well walk away straight away. Um, what do I, you mean if the other side's a bit hostile? Yeah, or, or over-defensive. Mm -hmm. uh, it nearly, I, I have actually got close to doing a deal with one of those and it ended up pulling out just before completion. So, And all my instincts were saying, this feels wrong, this feels wrong, and I didn't follow them. So, oh, that's interesting. So you do actually listen to your instincts when you're when you're doing calls like this. Absolutely, I think yeah. it's really important. Really yeah, important. very good. Yeah. I, I mean, I I think that if someone is difficult to do business with in that very first conversation, it doesn't bode well for the far trickier part of the relationship when you're negotiating money. Yeah, and if they're unreasonable at the beginning, it'll come back. If you think you've dealt with it, in my experience is it comes mm. back. So a classic was um, um, they uh, uh, one of the people talk, talked about red lines, and one of them was a defined value for a property, but not based on a formal valuation. And we explained why that wasn't reasonable. We thought we'd got over it. And then a week before completion, mm -hmm. they reintroduced it as a red line. <laughs> right, right, so we, got it. So we walked away at that point. They then tried to reopen negotiations. We said, no, sorry, that's it. Interesting, interesting. So, so... I suppose the benefit of having deal flow mm -hmm. is that you can walk away at any time. Yeah, and the amusing thing is they don't believe you. What a surprise, because well, anybody doing what we're doing is, is dodgy, aren't they? But um, it, it feels good saying that, which I have done recently, um, and it's genuine. We'll have another one completing in either the same slot or a month after they would have completed. Um, and uh, the work was going on behind. So that I think the deal flow and the negotiation flow before that yes. make a huge difference to um, how you feel in the process. You're not reliant on just one thing happening. So are you looking at this in, in specific geographies? No, I went national and then followed what happened. Um, I, I've got a story for you on the geography, and I know you have too, but the, the, in the telecoms business and ISP business that we set up, we actually set up a sub-dealer network and we were based in Norfolk, and uh, we thought, well, we'll go as far as the Midlands. Well, uh, the word went out, and the first inquiry was from Glasgow, and the second inquiry, but it was an introduction from a major supplier. And I thought, oh, well, if we turn that down, they're never going to put another one out mm -hmm, there, are they? Mm -hmm. The second one was in Yeovil. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so we ended up filling the gap. It did end so like up a, like a ten-hour travel uh, travel but, time but, between the two. And I'm not saying don't <laughs> don't be geographically specific. It, it's much easier if you are. Yes. Um, what I've done is I've made a point of I won't buy a business if I don't think they can stand on their own two feet very quickly. Yeah, so, so therefore, the geography becomes less important. Exactly. It? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, I, I I completely agree. If you've got weak management and it can't stand on, it, on its own two feet, all it will do is drag down the rest of the group. Yeah. All it would do is suck time and effort and energy and probably money to fix it. All, probably, of, the, all of those. Yeah, better not to buy it in the first place. Yeah. And to be fair, stuff happens as well. Uh, I missed one of the questions you said was important on the one where the reception team left. I forgot to ask the question of uh, are people related? Ah, yes. One of my favourite yeah. uh, so, subjects. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when it happened, I thought, looked at it and thought, oh, I'm supposed to ask that question. <laughs> so, so, well, they were sisters or something? Uh, mother and daughter. Mother and daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So one leaves, the other one obviously follows and yeah. two people gone. Yes, I've, um, I've had similar situations and you're often caught out when they have different surnames <laughs> and it doesn't even occur to you to sort of question the relationships. No, um, no, I, I must admit it was uh, that that was an interesting one. Yeah. Or when when the seller's relative is still working in the business, and they're actually quite influential in that business, and you think that the seller's gone, and you've got now a clean sweep to do what you want, but you've got the the seller's daughter yeah. who's influencing everyone behind the scenes. I haven't had that yet, but no doubt that'll come. Yeah, one no, day, it's... one day, <laughs> it's inevitable. What else, John? Could you share that? 
you've discovered along the way that in some ways maybe you wished you'd known earlier on, but you discovered from experience? I think the speed, it's not just the speed of doing the deal, it's the speed of engaging with the practice is really important. Mm -hmm. So, and we've actually changed the timing of when we'll do deals now because of that. Uh, there was, in fact, we've recovered the situation, but we bought a practice where the owner was getting married, going on honeymoon, um, and uh, the and it was uh, we actually completed it in July, and most of our senior people were taking holidays during August. Okay. And then the two, including me, who probably mm. would have picked it up, then got COVID. Right, right. And so there's probably a three-month gap before there was any significant engagement. Yeah. Now, we did yeah. we did do remote engagement, um, but it's just not the same. You need it's somebody not. to be there to, to, to talk through some it, things. People actually find the business that they work for being sold quite traumatic. Yeah. It's a sense of loss, of disconnection to the exiting owner. And if they had a good relationship with that owner, they are very concerned. Yeah. And they, they need a cup of tea and a, and a hug. Yeah. Um, and without that, they, they fill that void with gossip. And gossip typically <laughs> is negative, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And they make up their own stories, and they you you become the 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 the, the corporate who's just taken them over, and clearly doesn't care because when was the last time we saw someone from head office down here? <laughs> and and that is the conversation here. You know, whether it's you're buying restaurants or buying hairdressing salons, doesn't matter what you're buying. It's exactly the same conversation every time. Yeah, and to be fair, some of the remote technologies help, um, but even so. I think early and uh, the other one is um, probably the second practice we bought uh, we there were two really good people in there we did keep one of them we and the, we'd acted fairly quickly to say what we wanted uh, we dithered a little bit with the other one who was in two minds about what their, their future was going to be anyway and a mm -hmm. year later they've left uh, so I think we should have put an offer on the table quicker and probably but not certainly would have kept them John you've been a great guest Thank you so much no for problem. your input and thank you for sharing uh, your your wisdom as well because you've, you've been at both ends. You've, you've sold a business and now you're building another business and you know, you've done it very rapidly, but you've done it with care and caution. Um, and I think that uh, the information that you've shared today is going to be so useful to our, our viewers and, and listeners. And I look forward to catching up with you at the next Mastermind session. Great. Thank Enjoy you so much. Too. Thank you. Take care. All right, I'll walk, I'll walk down to the door with you. Much appreciated. Oh, it's dark. <laughs> Have a good journey yeah, back. Take care, Thank John. you so much, John. Thank you. Bye-bye. John is living proof that if you've got a plan, you can make this happen. And John has just followed a process, A, B, C, D, and he's got the result. I'm extremely proud of him. Well, there you have it. Three exceptional deal makers, three different approaches to buying businesses. And if you haven't been on my free online training, click the link somewhere on this screen, take the video course, and you will find the essentials that you need to know in order to buy a business successfully. And if you haven't done so yet, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, tap the notifications bell, and I'll see you on the next video.